So it's my turn to introduce our next speaker. Our next speaker is going to back up some of the things that were mentioned by Lucinda earlier on. Our next speaker is Andy Hesse to talk about local radio and Facebook advertising. Andy joined Toastmasters in 2016. He's a member of Berkhamsted Speakers in Division J and Pegasus Speakers Advanced Club in District 71. He's currently the breakfast presenter on Wickham Sound, Buckinghamshire and a big follow, follower of American politics. When asked about something that was amusing, he said, as Division J contest chair for table topics in 2018-19, my question was somewhat memorable and involved being arrested for being naked driving a ride on tractor. Over to you, Andy. And that went flat. Ah, here we go. We're not hearing you, Andy, or at least I'm not. No voice coming through. It's not that you are muted, Andy. It's some other reason. You haven't got the right mic selected or some such. No, it's working now. I think the mic is just too big. Or, or it's that double mute thing. That can you can now. you hear me now? Yes, we can. Ah, uh, I the mic's been working because I've already been on a, a Toastmasters meeting this morning, but uh, it's. It glitches out, so apologies for that. <clears throat> so very good afternoon to everybody. As Mike said in the introduction, um, I'm currently a breakfast DJ, um, not quite in the smashing nicey vein, but I am currently working for a, a local community radio station. My background is very much in media. <clears throat> I studied journalism at Southampton University, and uh, so I, I come from a background of, of kind of media and, and entertainment. What I want to talk about today is two things. Firstly, I want to talk about radio advertising in terms of Toastmasters. And secondly, I then want to talk about Facebook advertising. Now, these are two very, very different beasts in terms of advertising and, and promoting your club. They're not right for everybody and this is just to inform people about what options are available. So what I want to talk about this morning or this afternoon is what opportunities are out there in terms of radio. Uh, guesting is a really good alternative to advertising. Advertising itself and costs. And then on Facebook, talking about how it works, pros and cons, and targeting your audience. I have to plug you in here, love, because it's running out of battery. So in terms of radio, just very, very quick uh, idea of some of the numbers involved here. Commercial radio started off in 1973 in the UK. We were very, very late starting. And in the, the short span of time, in just over 50 years, we've reached up to 600 radio stations now in the UK. And Commercial radio in the UK has been a very, very slow burner, but for the last few years, it's really now starting to come into its own, especially when it comes to advertising. So there are effectively seven types of radio station. <clears throat> the first one is national radio. So your likes of Classic FM, TalkSport, Virgin Radio. Your quasi-national stations, which are things like Heart, Capital, Greatest Hits Radio, which you've got a lot of in, in the South and Southwest. Uh, regional radio, so things like Wave 105, Smooth, Downtown. <clears throat> uh, ILR stations such as KMFM, uh, Lynx FM, Pirate FM is a great example in, in Cornwall. Community radio stations, you've got Apple FM, Riviera FM, Voice FM. 
Uh, you've got RSL stations, so they they are they are very individualistic stations, and then you've got student radio stations such as Expression FM, Surge, and Stag Radio. And it's this bottom three that we really want to kind of have a look at because the others just aren't really going to be within the price range of anybody from Toastmasters, and they're not going to have the desired impact either. One of the great things that you can do <clears throat> in terms of advertising Toastmasters is to be a guest on the stations. And it's about building those relationships. Many people within District 91 know Sam Warner, who is, um, she was a, a former area director in Division J, and Sam, her business is, is speaking about autism. And she is a regular on BBC Radio Shropshire because she's built those relationships and she gets the old Toastmaster plugin. And being a guest, being a, an expert in your field is a great way of being able to make these promotions for your club, to be able to talk about public speaking, to be able to talk about the benefits of Toastmasters free of charge in an informative and entertaining way. And keeping your local radio stations up to date is really important. Tell them when you've got open house meetings. I'm sure Rupert would love that. Radio stations talking actively about the next Toastmasters meeting or the next open house that you've got, or club contests perhaps. So keep in mind when you're setting up things, just send a quick email to the radio station. It doesn't have to be long, doesn't have to be in depth. Just let them know what's happening and be because of that, you can then get a better audience without necessarily having to spend on any money. Now, the ad break is a guaranteed way of getting your message out to people. And depending on what the station is, depending on the catchment area, you can have anywhere between 50 to 150, 200,000 people in your audience. And it is a set time within the hour where you'll have adverts and people say they don't listen to adverts, they do. Adverts can become very, very, very memorable. When I was growing up in the Midlands, there was a, a taxi firm called Alan's Taxis in Coventry and all it was was Alan's Taxis and the phone number, which was 555555. And that stuck in people's brains because it was short, catchy and to the point. So advertising on radio is a brilliant thing. It is not the easiest thing to do and it is not the cheapest thing to do, but it can be incredibly effective. The main downside of this is that there are going to be upfront costs. So you will need to pay for an advert to be created. However, if you create a very <clears throat> generic advert, one that talks about your meetings, how to get access to them online, etc. You don't then have to keep paying to get them rewritten. You can use the same advert time and time again. And you can also use the advert on other radio stations. So once the advert's recorded, as long as the station hasn't put intellectual property on it, which they, they shouldn't do, I've known a couple, but they shouldn't do, you can then spread it around maybe as part of your area director budget you can claim some costs for getting an area-wide radio commercial written all you then do is rinse and repeat <clears throat> when um when it's time to, to launch the advert just to give you some idea <clears throat> oh Sorry, Jeanette's just asked a question here. Explain ILR and RSL. ILR is independent local radio. So this is a um, relatively large area of um, a county or a region that's covered. Um, they're, con they're considered to be um, old school um, radio stations, what uh, you would have known in, in Reading as things like Radio 210 and, and GWI in Bristol and um, Devon Air and, and Gemini in, um, in Devon. Uh, an RSL is a 28-day radio station which is set up specifically for a purpose. We have a lot of radio cracker stations that are set up just before Christmas that run for 28 days that are very, very local. 
they they either cover a town or part of a town uh, there's often ramadan radio as well so uh, radio that's set up just for the period of ramadan to broadcast um various information and also prayers and, and things like that so those are the two things so any rsls that are going around are really good to get involved in are really good to either <clears throat> be a guest or be a contributor um, and those can be found out through the ofcom website as to where your nearest one's going to be and when there are some um annual ones that deal with things like the tennis and major events as well just as an example in terms of radio advertising and, and the costs, uh, I spoke to the guys at Unity 101 in Southampton, which is a, <clears throat> a community radio station, and their production cost is about £150 for a 30-second advert with a voice and a backing track, which is a, about standard. And then the advert cost is £373 a month, and that's one ad break every two hours for a month, which is actually pretty good value. Now that might seem quite a lot and it is expensive. However, the return on investment, if you've got six new members through your doors, that's gonna pay back the money that you've spent. And if you get an extra two or three, it pays for itself. As I said, this is not necessarily for everybody, but it is an option to think about. And if you can combine an area director budget on marketing and PR, that is one of the options that is available to you. Now, I appreciate I've gone through that quite quickly, but I do only have a, a fairly limited uh, time slot on this. If anybody has any questions, you can always uh, DM me afterwards and I'm quite happy to answer them. I'm going to talk about Facebook adverts, and this is very, very different in terms of the way that you attract people. This is the way, very different to the way that you publicise things, and very different in terms of cost structure. With radio advertising, it's very much set costs depending on when you want to broadcast stuff and how long you want to broadcast stuff for. With Facebook advertising, there are many, many different settings that changes the algorithm as to how much it is going to cost you. So how does Facebook work? It targets users that have similar characteristics and locations and interests. So all of the information that you put in, it puts into an algorithm and says, this person is going to be part of your target audience. You control the budget, you control the type of audience that you want. With radio, you get everyone. You get every listener that's listening. With Facebook, you only get people that you've asked Facebook to look at. The downside of this is if you're too specific in what you're looking for to advertise, you will get a very, very small audience. Now, that shouldn't happen with Toastmasters because we should be looking to, at a fairly wide generic um, area but <clears throat> this does this is one thing just to bear in mind so facebook does target the characteristics and locations bearing in mind that so at least 70 percent of people have a facebook account that is a huge potential audience that you can promote your Toastmasters meetings to. If I looked at how many people in here have got a Facebook account, there's 92 people online at the moment, I would have said probably 75, 80 have got Facebook accounts. And therefore that is a ready-made built-in audience. With commercial radio, you may only get 5,000 listeners at one point. But with, as, as you will see in a minute, the, the audience is potentially huge. So the cons of this advertising is that if you don't have a Facebook account, you won't see the advertising. Again, with commercial radio, everybody that's listening will get that advert, but not. But if you don't have Facebook, you won't. The biggest audience is 25 to 34 year old men. Now, for some people, that's not a con. Some people, that's fine. 
but just be aware that the demographics are skewed towards that group. And when it comes to the 55 year old plus, that is quite a small proportion of Facebook users. And most of those are not highly active. So bear that one in mind when it comes to the demographics of the people you are trying to work with. And being too specific will re reduce your audience size. So these are all the different things you can do on Facebook. You can get more WhatsApp messages. You can get more visitors to your website. You can promote your business. You can promote your page. You can promote your Instagram. And all of these have wizards within them to help you guide you through the process. <clears throat> but just an example of targeting your audience. Um, I did this based on, on where I live in, in Wembley, North London. And a one kilometer radius from where I am will give me a potential total audience of about 64,000 people, which is pretty impressive. If I take it, if I take the age range down to just 30 to 40 people, I still get a reasonable audience. I've got 21,000 potential people there. But as you can see, the, the more specific I am, the more my audience goes down. If I increase the range to five kilometers, I have 80, 840,000 people potentially. If I increase it to 15 kilometers from where I am, a potential audience size of 5.7 million. So for some clubs, you can go 15, 20, 30 kilometers and you will get a really big sized audience. But again, you can't go too big, otherwise it's not going to be specific enough for your club and people are gonna go, well, I don't wanna particularly go that far. When you've decided how far you wanna go and what your audience age range is gonna be, it'll then give you an estimated daily result. So a one kilometer radius from here will get on a daily basis between about 500 and 1.3 thousand, so 1,300 people. And I can run an advert for 10 pounds, two pound a day across five days. It will give me you know, potentially 6,000 eyeballs somewhere in that region. If I expand my search radius, I'll then get between 750 and just over 2,000 again. I can have that for 10 pounds. That's not bad, 10 pounds to reach 2000 people where you could be spending somewhere in the region of 400 pounds and only getting five, 6,000 people on commercial radio. Again, it's kind of horses for courses. And you can also slide and customize how much you want to spend. So, Rather than Facebook telling you this is the audience you're going to get and this is how much it's going to cost, you can say to Facebook, this is how much I want to spend. Now, how many people am I going to reach? So you can tune, fine tune very much your slider and to say how much you want to spend in terms of your Facebook advertising. Be careful because there is a sneaky little option there that allows you to be constantly rebuild. If all you want to do is just do this for a promotion for an open house meeting, for example, then make sure that you're not being recurrently billed because otherwise Facebook will just keep taking your money. You get a lot of eyeballs, but it's how you market it yourself and how you get that interaction will depend on your success. So that is a very quick run through of the role of radio advertising and Facebook advertising. Um, I've just had a, a message from um, the VP at Spinnaker um, about having a uh, sharing advert between uh, two or three clubs. Absolutely, I think that's a really good idea, trying to maximize the value. Um, so, you know, Having, having an advert that talks about the three clubs you could potentially visit, 
would work nicely. It would help to cut the costs down and would then allow you a bit more flexibility. And as I said, keep in mind these community radio stations, keep in mind the student radio stations as well. If you're looking to get a slightly younger audience of your 18, 19, 20, 21 year olds, then there are some fantastic award-winning student radio stations out there. Surge is very much uh, one of my favorites in Southampton. Um, you've also got uh, Exeter as well, have, a, have an incredibly good uh, student radio station. So if you've got any more questions, then please do drop me a line and I will be more than happy to answer it. And I will now hand back to our Master of Ceremonies. Thank you very much indeed, Andy. Uh, I was anticipating there's somebody else that was the master of ceremonies. But we're, we're finished a little early. Um, we have a, a break scheduled at 10 minutes past two, and I make it three minutes past two at the moment. So has anybody got any further questions they'd like to ask of Andy? Yes. Hello, can I ask? Kevin. Yes, of course. Yeah, okay. Um, I, I'm actually just into my 80s and I'm not very good on technology, but I came up with a suggestion to my local Kinsale uh, Southern Ireland Club at our committee meeting the other day, which they thought was not bad. So I'm putting it to you and see where you can help possibly for other Toastmaster clubs. Uh, before the committee meeting, just with an inspiration, I went on to Google and entered can't remember the exact phrase, uh, something like, where can I get help to write a speech? And I came, uh, saw all the blue offers that they come up with, all the different sites, eventually found Toastmasters number 29, which rather slightly appalled me, slightly surprised me. I then put in another phrase, I only did two, and they could have been any other phrases. Where can I go to an evening meeting with camar camaraderie. I found Toastmasters, a club actually in Ireland, um, number 49. And as I say, from what I understand, and okay, it's not my sector of society, as you say, it's gonna be a, the younger fleet, but that's what we need as new members. Uh, how can I get Toastmasters up the scale so that when you ask these sort of questions, Toastmasters is appearing in the first, I don't know, maybe five to 10. And as I say, my club took it on board and said they're gonna try and see if they can do something within, I suppose, Ireland. But I'm just throwing it out as an idea, uh, which hopefully you're not going to totally reject or may have some benefit. Thank you. Gavin, no, thank you very much for that. Um, so I think there's a, there's a couple of things there. Uh, the, the, the phrase, the phrases that you actually put into Google are actually quite important. So if you put the words public speaking, just the words public speaking into Google, you find actually Toastmasters is, is either at the top or, or you know, second or third down. So try, trying to put too many words into a Google search can be a bit of a nightmare. Uh, for clubs in specific, when you're doing your website, make sure that you have lots of metadata behind it. So Google search words, make sure you've got plenty of keywords embedded into your website so that Google search can easily find words like public speaking. Um, we've had people putting various strings in like uh, getting over your fear of public speaking or fear of public speaking. Again, clubs having these in their websites really helps to boost it. But it's, it's also a case of the more people that search for Toastmasters, the higher the rank goes. Uh, so if everybody on here for the next five days does a Google search for Toastmasters or public speaking or words like that, the rank will go up because the influx of people um, will certainly help that. Um, so it's, it's 
really narrowing down what you're searching on Google would be would be my suggestion on that. Um, but obviously, anything that we can do to okay, to I help just, raise the Google so, search. So, sorry, sorry, Andy and Gavin, if I can just kind of throw my spanner, spanner in the works. Uh, search, engine, search engine optimization. Uh, so all the stuff you were talking about is uh, is SEO. Um, and it is the sort of thing that Toastmasters International need to do well, uh, District 91 and 71 need to do well, so that we come up higher on that, on that ranking. Um, and it's, it's links, like you said, it's, it's a clever algorithm, um, so that whatever somebody puts into the search engine, um, it's likely to come up higher. And the long and the short of it is, the more money you pay to Google, the more likely you are to come up higher on their uh, on their searches. Yeah, thank you. Might, might I just add one little comment? That what I was trying to do was imagine I was Mr. Joe Soap. So maybe that's why it was a bit more long-winded. But I, yeah. I wasn't a, a Facebook user. I was just trying to seek information. So imagine I'm out in the field, so to speak. Uh, that hence that's uh, explained slightly. Uh, my long wordiness, although I think I am a bit of a long word uh, type of person. Thank you. Gavin, the other important thing you have to understand, it is it is a very dark art, the uh, the Google algorithm. So um, <laughs> don't don't be surprised that people don't understand it. <laughs> could I ask could I ask could I ask you rural Dorset, rural, you know, big wide areas, low population. What's a yep. Facebook strategy for reaching that demographic? You know, that sort of very rural, no sit, not the city opportunities. I think with online meetings at the moment, you can cast your net fairly wide. So you could do a Facebook search for the whole of Dorset or Dorset Stroke Wiltshire, um, maybe a bit of uh, sort of Berkshire, West Berkshire as well. Um, so for when, for online, that doesn't really matter. I think for rural, when you're back to physical meetings again, I think it's a case of using Facebook with other strategies. So again, talking about things like the, going back to the radio, using things like BBC Wiltshire Sound, um, using BBC Dorset uh, as guests, as contributors, uh, would you know, help increase that visibility would help increase that um, reach of people and some there are some uh, small community radio stations around Dorset that uh, are starting to get some quite good traction nowadays so again try and try and hunt them out and and start to work with them to help craft a bit of a, a media strategy thank you very much Andy it's now rapidly approaching 10 past two. We have a 10 minute break and then we'll resume. No, sorry, a five minute break. My apologies. A five minute break. We'll resume at quarter past. So a short break.